Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to show you how to come up with the formula for the derivative of the absolute value of any function, as long as you can take the derivative of the function. And then we're going to use the formula to find the derivative, and then we'll do it without the formula as well. So let's start by finding the derivative of the absolute value of f of x. So I guess we should give it a name. Let's maybe call it g of x. So g of x is equal to the absolute value of f of x. So to find the derivative of this, we have to assume a couple things. One, we have to assume that the derivative of f is not 0. And two, we have to assume that uh, it's going to be defined everywhere, everything is OK, um, and we can take its derivative. So the absolute value of x is equal to the square root of x squared. Right? So what we can do here is we can write this as the square root of f of x squared. Right? Same thing. Our x is f of x, right? Now we can write the square root as something to the one half power. So it's f of x squared to the one half. And now we can take the derivative. When we take the derivative, we're going to be using the chain rule. So g prime of x. So we'll put the one half in the front. So we get 1 half, parentheses, then we leave the inside alone, so f of x squared, and then 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, times the derivative of the inside function. So here we have to use the chain rule again. So we'll bring down the 2, then we get f of x to the first power, which is just f of x, times, again, the derivative of the inside, which is just f prime of x. So recap. Whenever you have a function with an absolute value and you want to find the derivative, you first replace the absolute value with the square root of that function squared. Then you write the square root to the 1 half power. Then you just differentiate and use the chain rule. So bring down the 1 half. We subtracted 1. We got negative 1 half. Then we multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Right? Chain rule again. f of x. Boom. Derivative of inside. f prime of x. The 2's cancel. So we get, let's see. Uh, I'm going to put the f prime in the front. f prime of x times, then we have f of x, and then we can bring this guy downstairs and make it positive. So it'll be f of x quantity squared to the 1 half. Let's keep going. So g prime of x is equal to f prime of x times f of x over, and then that can become a square root, right? That's what we, that's what the 1 half does. So this is f of x squared. And here's the really cool part. This is equal to f prime of x times f of x. And it's all over, well, this bottom piece, we know that whenever you have the square root of something squared, it's just the absolute value of that something, right? So this is the absolute value of f of x. And so there's our formula, right? There's our formula for the derivative of the absolute value of f. So to recap, the formula in this case, so if you take the derivative with respect to x of the absolute value of f of x, you're going to get f prime of x times the function f of x divided by the absolute value of f of x. Pretty cool stuff. Obviously here f of x is not equal to 0. Um, let's do a quick example of this. So let's let's try it for like, I don't know, let's see. Let's see, g of x equals, let's, let's keep it simple. Let's do x cubed. So if we're doing g of x equals x cubed, let's do it two ways. Method one, let's do it with our formula. Okay, let's try it. So d dx of, oh, I guess absolute value of x cubed, right? So <laughs> d dx of the absolute value of x cubed. Okay, let's try to do this. So f here, f here is, is the x cubed part, right? That's what's inside the absolute value. So it should be 3x squared times, right, times, and then f of x, well, that's, that's the x cubed part. That's the part that's inside the absolute value, right? So that's going to be... Uh, x cubed, and then down here we have the absolute value of x cubed. 
So that is the derivative of the absolute value of x cubed according to the formula. And you can simplify this, right? This is going to be 3x to the fifth over the absolute value of x cubed. But you know what? Let's quickly do it without the formula. So what would you do if you were in a situation where you forgot the formula, right? What, what you would do is you would go through the same process that you went through to come up with the formula, right? So you have the absolute value of x cubed. You can write that. Remember, whenever you have an absolute value, you can write it as the square root of whatever's in there squared, always, every single time, right? Remember, the absolute value of x is equal to the square root of x squared. This is super useful, not just for this, but for like other things in mathematics. It is so useful. Then you can take that square root, right? We can take that square root, and we can write it to the 1 half power. Okay, write it to the 1 half power. And then we'll take the derivative, right? So g prime of x, bring down the 1 half. So we get x cubed squared to the negative 1 half. Then take the derivative of the inside. Notice I didn't multiply the 2 and the 3m. I'm leaving it like this on purpose, just so everything works out beautifully. Bring down the 2, x cubed to the 1 times the derivative of the inside, so 3x squared. Choose cancel. This is equal to, right, we get 3x to the fifth up top. Going kind of fast. Then you bring this back down, and it becomes the square root of x cubed squared. See, that's why I didn't multiply the 2 and the 3. If you, you could do 2 times 3, and you get 6, but then you'll forget that it can be written this way. Watch this. This is 3x to the fifth over, and then this piece here, we know that becomes the absolute value of x cubed. So I kind of rushed through that last piece. Uh, but in the videos that follow, you'll see more examples of this process, and you'll see all of these steps. I hope this video was helpful. That's it.